Hello everyone. It sure has been a while since the last video, and for many reasons. That includes school starting and procrastination. And remember when I said this? And I can say for about 90% certainty that the next devlog will come with a Steam page. Yeah, that hasn't happened yet. I have everything set up to do it other than creating a business for tax reasons, which is kind of slowing me down. So maybe in the next two or three devlogs you can have a place to wishlist the game. But enough about what I didn't do, let's just get into the video. This one will be a little different because I was too lazy to record clips of changes, so what I did was try and play the game for about 20 minutes and showcase everything that has changed, which is a lot. So let's get started. The first thing you may notice is that the environment has changed. I remade the mountains to make way for a new system, and the foliage generation I worked on in the last episode is also generating differently, but I'll get into that later. To start things off, you need to place some paths down for your guests to walk on. I used to walk on the grass, but that's just wrong. So I added two types of paths, which are concrete and rocky. If you don't have any paths, guests can't enter your park. I've also added some new course pieces, and you can see some here in this hole. Another thing I added that is very helpful is the ability to duplicate objects. You can hold down control when building to duplicate the last object you placed and continue placing it, or shift and D to duplicate the selected object. You can also always just use the UI. I also added multi-selection, which you can do by holding down shift while selecting objects. You can move, delete, and duplicate the selected objects as well. Probably one of the best things I have added is water. It is simply an object you can place, but you can scale it to however big you would like with the advanced move tools, which makes it very versatile. It can be either circular or square. Water can make areas of your park stand out or just look really nice, and soon I'm going to add some water plants like lily pads or cattails. I've also added a few more decorations, including a volcano, a bridge, a new tree, flowers, and planters. The box planter decoration has six variants, so you can make a bunch of different shapes with them, or just keep it at its normal size. I just decorated this one with a small amount of scenery there is in the game, but soon there will be a bunch more, like flowers, bushes, and small trees. The next big system I added to the game is the course system. Using the new management panel, you can create courses, which are collections of holes that the guests will play in order. If there are no courses in the park, no guests will spawn. If a hole is not completed, meaning there is no hole or T, then you can't add it to the course. The holes will be added in the order you selected them, but you can always change the order using the arrows in the UI. And now that I have a course, I can let the guests in. In this recording, the collider of the T is really messed up, so the guests are getting stuck on it. I had to scale it down a bit so they can get to it, and added a path around it so they can continue. Another huge change is the AI. I completely redid it again, so now it isn't so heavily focused on raycasting. You may notice it is doing a lot better than the last time we saw it, so how does it work? I was trying to think of different raycasting solutions when an idea hit me. What if I used physics instead of raycasting? I knew it would be a lot slower and a lot laggier, but it would be so much more accurate, so I came up with the idea of ghost balls which basically means it shoots out a ton of invisible golf balls and waits till they all stop moving. And when they do, it calculates the best shot based on the distance from the hole and if the ball had actually hit the hole or not. It still uses raycast to determine if it should shoot a ghost ball or not, but other than that, it doesn't use raycasting. As I said, it is a lot slower, so I had to give them an animation to play while the ghost balls are still moving. So now it looks like they are thinking about their next shot. And they actually are. This works a lot better for elevation, decorations, and other things that the previous AI couldn't maneuver as easily. The last system I want to talk about is the new plot system. I realized that the small square of land you had to build on wasn't really enough room to build large parks, but instead of just expanding the area you had to build on, I wanted to add plots of land you could buy. You start with a pretty small area, but it can grow quite a bit. To show which plots you don't own, I used the foliage generation code to generate a dense forest where you can't build, which is a pretty good visual representation. That pretty much sums up most of the new systems, but there were of course a lot of other little changes. Nighttime is now kind of skipped, meaning that the clock speeds up after a certain time so that it isn't dark for as long. I also added a sphere in the sky to represent the sun, and fixed some bugs with the rotation of the sun relative to the time. The categories also changed a little in the decor menu, and I added some theme toggles for when I start adding a lot more objects so you can easily sort the menu. 
I also added a graph on the finances page of the management menu to show you how much money you are making a day. There are even more minor changes and bug fixes, but I think that's about the bulk of it. And as this time lapse comes to an end, I think it's about time to end the video. If you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.